For the first time, Boston, the city of champions, welcomes Red Bull Crash Dice to Fenway Park. Brew, everything is better under the bright lights of this iconic stadium. Who, though, will survive and add their name to the history books? Welcome to Ice Cross Downhill. This is Crash Ice Boston from Fenway Park. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey everybody, Sal Masakella here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia and welcome to Baston, Massachusetts and inside the historic Fenway Park, of course, built in 1912 and home to the nine-time world champion Boston Red Sox. But tonight, thousands of fans have decided to brave temperatures in the teens, trust me, it's cold, not for baseball, but for the third stop in the Ice Cross Downhill World Championships. First, it was Yokohama, Japan, then Evaskala, Finland, and tonight, for the first time ever in a stadium setting, we are inside Fenway Park. Now, you might be asking, Sal, what is crashed ice? That's a good question. First of all, there's a reason that the term crashed is in the title. Thank me later. Secondly, it's much like Olympic sports that you've seen before, ski across or board across, except four athletes will start at the top in left field and cross a finish line aptly at home plate while navigating 1,150 feet of ice on ice skates. There are 180 degree turns, there are rollers, there are step downs, and of course, three other athletes who are doing everything they can to take you out. When this is finished, I promise you, you too will be a Crashed Ice fan. For more on our field and what you can expect from these amazing men and women, I will throw it down to the locker room with Jack Nichols and Tina Dixon. Thanks, Sal. Well, we've made our way down to the locker room where the tension is starting to grow ahead of tonight's competition. Tina, who are you looking for in the men's category? American Cameron Nas. This track absolutely suits him. It's technical. That is his style. He's going to be looking for some redemption after his poor finish less than a week ago in Finland. And also, he's on U.S. ice in front of a very passionate Boston crowd, and they are still buzzing off of their Patriots Super Bowl win. <laughs> yeah, another American, Amanda Trunzo, is looking good in the women's competition. She won in Japan, won in Finland as well, but she's got some competition. Yeah, as in Anais Morant, she's a Swiss rider who actually has an Olympic figure skating background, which is nothing like this. But over the years, she's honed her skills, and she is looking very good and can definitely upset Trunzo's run at a world championship. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating evening of competition, and when the riders have finished the course, whether they're happy or sad, they'll be talking to Kate Osborne. The energy down here at the finish line is electric, and I'm not alone in saying that everyone is excited to see these athletes race down this track for the first time in a stadium setting. With all of the atmosphere and electricity happening around here, one thing that I have a feeling we'll see a lot of is the use of this protest button. These athletes have six seconds to push us as they cross the finish line if they feel something did not go in their favor during that race. As former champ Kyle Croxel said, it's their last chance to get a say in. However, they do have to point in which section that the incident may have occurred. He says you do not have time to look at a replay, and it has to be a gut reaction. And we'll see how this plays a part in today's event. Thank you, Kate. So let's take a closer look at the course the riders are going to be tackling here at Fenway Park, Tina. And this is a spectacular setting for a Red Bull crashed ice event. The start is about seven stories high, a fast pull out of the gate for the riders into the Kia curve turn. It's a 180 degree bank turn and getting the whole shot out of that will be key as they head into the Sam Adams deck drop. A series of drops where they will be carrying a lot of speed and also a chance for them to separate themselves from the pack as they head into the BF Goodrich tire section. Legs burning, lungs burning at this point. A series of technical rollers and then the final push to the finish line. And Jack, what a setting here in Boston and this course just didn't pop up overnight. A lot of work went into this. In fact, course workers got here late December 
to start putting this thing up. Yeah, six weeks it's taken them to build this construction. It's an absolutely stunning track and the first Red Bull Crash Dice event inside a stadium. And so much excitement leading up to this event and all the scaffolding that they put in in the 24-hour work days. Step by step, they built this thing. And it wasn't easy with the weather, rain, ice, cold, snow. And then over 60,000 feet of wide cooling mats are used to chill the racing surface. And then once that is placed, they do overnight shifts to spray the water and get that ice in place. But what a result. Fantastic setting out here for Red Bull Crash Dice. It is chilly, 28 degrees with the wind chill factor of 15 degrees. Sal is out there. Thank you, Tina. To say that it is cold here at the top of Fenway Park would be an understatement. I got on the long johns, I got the hand warmers, and I still feel like I'm sitting in ice. Uh, before we get started with racing, how about we take a look at our standings here in the quest for the Ice Cross World Championships. First up at the top, you see Kyle Croxel. He has won a world championship before, and he is happy to be in the lead. Next to him, Mirko Lati from Finland. But that third and fourth spot, very interesting. Scott Croxel, the younger brother of Kyle, a two-time world champ himself, and Cameron Noss, also a two-time winner. For these two tonight is very important. If they're gonna take out Kyle, they need to perform at the highest level. And wouldn't you know, in our round of 32, it gets heated right off the bat as Cameron Noss is featured. We'll go now to Jack Nichols and Tina for the call. Thanks, Sal. We've got the round of 32 race about to get underway. Cameron Noz is in it in the black and orange there. The two times world champion. Can he progress through to the quarterfinals? And away he goes down towards the first corner on the left hand side is Ricard Van Vier in the white and blue is the Finn Yanni Saarinen. Saarinen drops down into third place. Also in there is Shane Renault in the uh, black, but Cameron Nas, oh, comfortably out in front. It's very close for second though, Tina. That's right, and the battle right now is for that second and third place. And oh. look at the carnage already in the back. Cameron stays in the front, in the clear with that clear ice. And at this point, it's still early in the racing. You can tell Cameron Nas is not racing 100%. <laughs> He's going to save that for the final. And it's Shane Renault that advances with him through to the uh, next round and the quarterfinals. But that was fairly straightforward for Cameron Nas. It all kicked off behind. Ricard Van Vieja considering protesting there. I don't think he did in the end. But a strong, strong race for Cameron Nas. Straight out of the gates. He's so good at those gate starts. Although, Yoni Saarinen in the white was pretty good. Yeah, but do you see how he can generate speed? He off that bottom of the jump, and then he gets to that first 180 turn. And with that hole shot, and that's what you want. He wants that clean ice in front of him. And Cameron Nas, you know, like I said, at this point, he was not racing 100%. And see how far in front of everyone else he was? That's scary for the rest of the other competitors <laughs> because this track suits him. It is technical, and to me, he is technically superior. And showing off a little as he crosses the line as well. So, advancing through to the next round, it is Cameron Nuz and Shane Renault. One race down, but still plenty more to come when we return to Red Bull Crashed Ice from Fenway Park. No doubt you are enjoying the crashing and the racing of Red Bull Crash Dice, but you might be wondering, how do you train for something like this since these tracks don't exist anywhere in the world except for competition? Well, it's a mix of CrossFit, box jumps, skate parks, basically anything you can find to give you an edge. With the starts being critical, the race to get out in front, you really got to work on strength and then transitioning that to quickness. Really good start from Cameron Nas. Training to get a good start, it's a lot about leg strength. I'll really make sure that my legs are as strong as possible. Some conditioning work you can do to work on the explosiveness are adding in box jumps. Box jumps are explosive movement. And I have to make sure I'm moving and I'm coordinated to get up there, get my feet on the boxes, and it's really difficult. It helps in the starts, getting that quick explosiveness to be able to plow through your first two strides out of the gate. 
Adding in box jumps will help to train for this crazy sport. Well, let's see who's put that start training to good use for this next heat in the round of 32. We've got Michael Julianello, Iggy there in the camo on the middle left. Killian Braun is over on the far left. Dan Witte, the American, is in there, as well as Patrick Mertz, the Swiss rider, on the right-hand side. And it is a strong start from Iggy, who moves into first place fairly comfortably. Mertz in behind him, and Dan Whitty is down at the back at the moment, although he's having a good fight out with Killian Braun, who I would have expected to be further forward. Julianello comfortably in front. And right now, Whitty's in the very back in fourth place, so he's got to make a move. But Iggy going around this 180 turn, and we talked to him earlier, he said, I love the 180 turns. <laughs> he loves this track, and it's already showing. Here he comes then towards the line, just two more rollers to go, and Julianello is through. It's pretty close for second, but it is the two Americans, Julianello and Dan Whitty, that progress and advance through to the quarterfinals. And uh, that was quite close at the end there, but Whitty was at the back, so to advance is pretty impressive. Whitty was at the back after those drops and made his way up to second to advance. There's Killian Braun, he will not advance, but take a look at the start, the explosive start by the American Iggy. He's in the camo, coming around that 180 turn that he loves so much first. Dan Witte, he's in the back at this point. He's on the right side of your screen, right there in that white and blue. Okay, Killian Braun goes down, so that opens up some space for Witte to make a move. He sees his opportunity, he is going to seize it. That is racing right there. And at this point, Killian Braun doesn't have enough room to make up. And Witte comes into these final rollers. He's in third. All right, he's got to make a move. He's on the outside line at this point. He pumps. He creates speed through those rollers and makes a pass and moves on. Fantastic race for Dan Witte. Well, fantastic second half of the race anyway. It's he and Michael Giulianello who are going to be advancing on to the quarterfinals. Two Americans going through, high fives all around, and Julianello is down with Kate. An impressive heat win for Iggy there. You know, this is one of those tracks that you love those 180s, but you did tell me earlier today you don't like heights, and that's very difficult. What is that all about here? I don't know. I don't mind going down the track because my skates are in control, uh, but so I guess it gets me out of the gate a little faster. What are your takeaways from that event that you can take now into the semis? Uh, you know, fast starts, clean runs, uh, stay out in front and stay out of the carnage. All right, that's what he has to do. Guys? Max Dunn, Scott Croxall, Jojo Velasquez, and Oravec are in this heat. This is the one we've been most looking forward to in the round of 32. So let's keep an eye on these riders. Quite a long hold it felt, and Max Dunn in the blue and green on the inside gets the whole shot as they come up into the Kia curve turn for the first time. Scott Croxall is the reigning champion. He's all in black. Jojo Velasquez in the yellow won the Junior World Championships last night. This is a fantastic heat already. Max Dunn with the lead and Scott Croxall right on him, but you got to be careful for Jojo Velasquez. He's on the yellow and black. He's falling behind at this point, though, but he's your junior world champion. Velasquez and Oravec got together, and that means they've dropped quite a way back. It's all done down! Does he get across oh. the line? That was so close! The timing says Oravec will have to wait for the photo finish, but Dunn and Croxall look to have it in the bag that they were going to be advancing. Will they have? Dunn looked perfect that entire race. He's hit the buzzer, he's protested Max Dunn, whatever happened at the end there, and they're having a conversation. He's saying, I mean, it can only have been a collision with Scott Croxall because they were nowhere near anyone else. We'll have to go back and look to see exactly what happened with those rollers. But Jack, when I first saw this course and I saw those rollers at the bottom, I said, that is going to be trouble for a lot <laughs> of riders because you're coming into that and you see that finish line and mentally you've already crossed it, but you still have to skate and you still have to skate a very technical section. Max Dunn looked so good this entire race. He was explosive out of the start. He got that 180 degree turn quick. Scott Croxell was behind him. Max set the standard on this, but coming into these rollers, let's see what happened. So Dunn's on the, oh, he just loses his balance. That was all him. Oh, and the photo finish is tight. We'll have to wait and see, but 
the two were close together. Scott Croxall on the inside, but you're not allowed to push someone over. You're not allowed to wrestle with someone, but there's not really any contact. Dunn just almost gets distracted by Croxall and loses his balance. That's There's nothing there to warrant a reverse call. Oh. That was all Max Dunn going down on his own. He hasn't got it. Look. Oh! That is definitely going to be an advance for Boris Oravec. And that is an impressive performance to get through to the quarterfinals for the Slovakian. But it is not what Max Dunn wanted. And he was he was there. <sighs> what, he had 10 yards to the line? It's heartbreaking. Protest denied. Protest denied. And so that means that it will be the two riders, Scott Croxhall and the Slovakian Oravec, <laughs> who are advancing through to the quarterfinals. And that is very disappointing for Max Dunn, who is with Kate. He's hanging his head a little low, a very disappointing night for Maxwell Dunn. You were leading that event, and then what happened? Yeah, I, I just had a great start, led the whole race, and uh, it's a little maybe too much of a speed check in last turn, so Scott pulled up on me, and I just lost my balance going over the rollers, unfortunately, and took third in that race. With the protest, what did you hope was going to happen from that? Uh, you know what, to be honest, I, I was pretty sure nothing happened. But there's so much that you have eight sec or I think it's six seconds to decide. And and it, it was earlier than I would have liked to go out. And it's worth a shot in that case. All right. Well, I'm sorry to hear this is how the night ended for you here, especially in the States, guys. Thank you. When we come back, the women will get their chance to compete on this Fenway Park course in Red Bull Crash Dice. And with that victory, Cameron Noz moves to the top of the Men's World Championship standing. Scott Croxall comes with him up into second place. Kyle Croxall, after his early elimination, moves from the top of the standings all the way down to third. Then Luca Delago in fourth. Mirko Lati, another big loser tonight. He slips down into fifth position. But what an evening of racing, Tina. Don't really know where to start. I mean, we'll start with Cameron Noz because he was superb. Well, let's go back to that final when the uh, the crowd was chanting USA, <laughs> yeah. USA. And to have that type of pressure put on your shoulders, Cameron took that and instead of faltering under pressure where maybe some people could or would, he fed off of that and he performed. I mean, that last race was near perfect and Cameron needed this race. He had a horrible performance in Finland less than a week ago. He put that out of his mind and came in and showed us why he is a two-time world champion. It was a uh, wild racing, Noz called it. It's known as a wild ballpark here at Fenway Park. The, the, the course was incredible and some of the action was just un uh, unbelievable. Oh yeah, well we had heartbreaking moments like Max Dunn going out early oh. after leading the entire time. We saw some guys go into the boards and some guys crashing right there at the finish line. This was probably one of my funnest or one of my most fun races to watch because that finish line, there were so many close moments and that is racing. Yeah, you never knew what was gonna happen right until the end. As far as the women's competition is concerned, Amanda Trunzo winning no huge surprise because she's now won the three 1,000-point uh, events back-to-back -back this season. But Jacqueline Leger was a big surprise, not making it through to the final. Well, and Jacqueline didn't look good on this course all week. And just something seemed off for her. But Amanda Trunzo came in and she capitalized on that. She seized the opportunity to take the top of this race. And, uh, and then there's that underdog story of that young Tamara uh, Mewison who came in and finished on the podium. Yeah, absolutely superb racing throughout the men's championship, throughout the women's championship. We're going to go for a rest now, Sal. Back to you. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia. I am Sal Masekela, your host here at the first ever Red Bull Crashed Ice Boston inside Fenway Park. The fans are going nuts. They got the bang sticks out here. They cannot feel the cold because the racing is amazing. We're getting ready to get into our women's field of 16. And as you take a look at the leaderboard this season, you see Jacqueline Legere, two-time world champion from Canada, followed by the American Amanda Trunzo. She has just come off of a big win in Finland and is feeling the momentum. She would like to get a second world championship. But look out for the Swiss rider Anais Moran. This is an athlete that was a former Olympic figure skater that has made the transition into crash dice and she is doing well. You could see her in the final and tonight 
Might be the first time we get to see her at the top of the podium. We'll go back to Jack and Tina for the call and our first quarterfinal, which will actually feature American Amanda Trunzo. And the women's quarterfinals are underway. Then Amanda Trunzo gets a good start. The reigning champion as they come up into the first right-hander. She's in front of Tobolnitsky in second, the Canadian. And then down in third position at the moment is Monica Boudreau. And then down at the back is Junka Yamamoto. And so we'll see whether they're able to climb up. Oh, no, so Yamamoto's up into second place now. So a good start from the Japanese racer, Tobolnitsky, out of the top two at the moment. And at this point, Topolniski needs to make something happen, and she's struggling in the, this section. But Trunzo, this is the first race we've seen her on this track, and she, Ooh. oh, so I was speaking too early. I was going to say she looks so comfortable. And then followed by Junko Yamamoto. So it will be Amanda Trunzo and Junko Yamamoto who will transfer to the semifinal. But Trunzo up top looked very solid, very comfortable. Uh, almost racing at 90%. It's still early on in the racing. We'll get to semifinals, and then if she makes the finals, she wants to be able to save her legs for that. But look at the start. Trunzo is your world champion right now. She's in the black already with the lead. Fantastic. As she comes to this 180-degree turn first, and I talked to Amanda before the race, and she says she always looks for a point on the track to get to first. Yep, and here's a look at them coming down, those drops. And full credit at the back to uh, Monica Boudreau, the Canadian, in her first ever Crash Dice event. She got to the end, took her a little longer than everyone else. This is where you were saying Trunzo's so comfortable and confident. Uh, well, this section, <laughs> <laughs> she was looking fantastic up till then. But you know what? It's a good thing that she figured out those rollers early on so she doesn't make those mistakes when it really, really matters in that final. So Yamamoto and Trunzo advance through to the semi-finals in the women's competition. And let's go down to Kate, who is with Amanda. She's had a nearly perfect season so far. Amanda Trunzo looking to get her eighth win here of her career. Reigning champ, you made it look easy out there. What percentage are you running right now? Yeah, you know, I'd say that was about 75% there. You know, I was just getting a feel for the ice and, yeah, taking it slow, taking it safe, and just feeling things out. Amanda, right there after that last right-hander, looked a little bit of a stumble. What happened? Yeah, I just kind of tripped up on this uh, roller here, so i got to clean that up a little bit, but, yeah, should be fine. Any takeaways here going into the next? Yeah, you know, i got two uh, good competitors coming in with me from that last seat, and Junko and mine, so, yeah, just got to stay strong and get out in front. I think she's one that can stay strong, guys. We're ready for the next quarterfinal. We've got Tamara Kajar on the left-hand side, Anais Moran alongside her in the white and red. Then it's uh, Sinovich and... Alice Zenz, the Austrian in the black. The gates open. Anais Moran in the white and red is one to watch out short for. She's been very strong this year. Tamara Kajar is going to try and stay with her in the white and pale blue. And Anise Morand is my dark horse for this race. She's in the lead right now in that red helmet, the white and the red. She's got to watch out, though. Tamara Kaja is coming up on her. But Jack, it's the top two that transfer on into the semifinals, so you just got to be in those top two. But right now, Anise Morand is losing some ground. They're going to be side by side as they come over the third base spine. And then the final two rollers and Tamara Kaja could be in a little bit of trouble here. It's going to be close to the line. Anais Moran goes through, as does Tamara Kajar. Sinovich, in the end, really getting close to uh, taking the place away from Kajar, but the two of them make it through. That was close. And Anis Morand, you're looking at her right now. She has that Olympic figure skating background. We were talking about her earlier, and that is nothing like this race. This is nothing like this. The skates are different. The racing is different. The technique is different. So throughout this last year, she really started honing her skating skills specifically for crash dice, and she has come into this event as a dark horse, and I, she's one that really could upset the balance on that women's side of things. Well, she and Tamara Kajar are going to be advancing to the semi-finals after taking down this course in Fenway. There's a lot of different elements to this course. One of them is the big drops. Let's find out more about them. It's hard to train for a big drop. We don't have those all over the place, but out here at Woodward, they have a lot of big drops, especially in the mini mega ramp that we skated a lot. Coming here to Woodward's been great. Getting on the mini mega, just to feel comfortable with that quick transition at the bottom, taking a lot of speed and, and force into it. 
you have to skate into it and pump as hard as you can, especially when it was windy like it was here, and pump through the bottom of that transition too. It's just, they're scary, those drops. If you can come out here and you can train a scary feature, like that's as prepared as you can get for those big drops. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia. I am Sal Masakella, and this is Red Bull Crash Dice Boston. Now, many of you that have been watching at home, you might be thinking to yourself, you know what, Sal? I'm a wicked good ice skater. I bet you I could compete in Crash Dice. Watching on TV, you might get excited and think that. But what if I told you it's not that easy? Imagine if you took an Olympic captain of the U.S. hockey team, the women's team, Hillary Knight, and put her on this track. What do you think what would happen? Well, we partnered her with her old college hockey rival, Miriam Trepanier, to see exactly what would happen. How's it going? Good, it's been a while. Yeah? Like 10 years? Yeah? Took a little different path, you and I. Yeah. From the days of the WCHA. First time at Crash Dice? It is. I've seen it uh, through TV, but I've never been here live. Uh, instead of defending you this time, I'm going to be teaching you how to go down this beast. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Come on and get me how to jump over the different hops, I guess, in the course. Uh, my first one, I didn't listen, and I just tried to jump it the way that I thought, and I went flying. At first, it was terrifying, and then it became exciting, and now it's just, it's really thrilling. I mean, it's one thing to watch it on TV, and then another thing to actually be on the course and experience very slowly what the, uh, the pros experience. I think she did really great. She uh, learned the jumps pretty quickly. Uh, she definitely has a really strong stride. So I think, you know, once hockey's over for her, maybe she could transition to do, doing this. Maybe I'll be her personal coach, who knows. <laughs> this quarterfinal about to get underway. We've got Miriam Trepanier, Jacqueline Legere, Malina Lelde, and Michaela Michelson about to do battle. That is Jacqueline Legere in the pink. Away we go, and is it going to be a decent start for the two times world champion? Yes, it is. Legere on the inside, Trepanier coming with her in second place, and then Michaela Michelson slotting into third position as they come around down into the drops once more. This is where Trepanier will have a bit of an advantage, very strong in a straight line. And she knows how to read transitions. This is the jump section and the roller section. She's got to be careful. Trepanier is right there on her back, but she knows how to read these transitions. She's very good at timing the features on this track. When it comes to a technical course like this, Legere is, I think, technically superior than most of the women out here, and she transfers on. Yep, and Miriam Trepanier comes across the line in second place. Michaela Michelson in third, and then a little bit of a wait for the Latvian Melina Lelde who comes through in uh, fourth position then. And so it is Legere and Trepanier, the two Canadians that advance through to the semi-finals. And here's a look at uh, Trepanier was quite quick out of the gate there. She is, and Trepanier is a very consistent racer. She's not loose on the track. She just does her, her own race. She keeps to her own line. But Legere, she's the one in the peak. She was the world champion coming into last year, and then Trunzo took over, and Legere, she, you know, she's got to want that back. So it is Miriam Trepanier who is advancing to the semifinals along with Jacqueline Legere after an entertaining rice, and uh, the semifinals is the cry from Legere. Let's go down to Kate, who's with Miriam Trepanier. This is one of those tracks that Miriam told me that she really likes. Why is this a track that is so suited for you? You know, I think the features suit me well. Um, it's a lot of the stuff that I train for. Um, I like the style of it. It goes downhill. It features, uh, you know, it features a lot of uh, advantages for bigger bodies like me. 
What was the experience like with Hillary out there on the ice? <laughs> I love the smile that just came to your face. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, I played against Hillary in college in college at hockey, and uh, it had been 10 years since I'd seen her, and it was kind of fun to uh, teach her a little bit of what I do now, what's my passion nowadays, and uh, I think she really liked it. Speaking of passion, we could see you definitely have some passion for this track. However, that quarterfinal it looked like Jacqueline had a little bit on you. What did she have? Yeah, you know, uh, the gates are tricky. You never know which one's going to go faster. Um, the quarterfinals are always kind of a crapshoot a little bit because uh, you don't know what the ice is going to be like. You know, the weather changes from afternoon to evening, so it's and you have the jitters going on the first heat. So now that's gone. So uh, I'm moving on the semifinal, and I'm happy about that. When we return, we'll be back to the men's competition with the quarterfinal runs here at Fenway Park in Boston. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia. I am Sal Masekela, and we're having a party here on a Saturday night as we make history at Red Bull Crash Dice Boston. Now, as we said at the top of the show, Tonight's competition is a quest for points to crown an Ice Cross World Champion. And as you can see, these two rivals, the Canadian Scott Croxel and American Cameron Noss, they both have two apiece. They are hardcore rivals. They'd like to break this tie so one could have the bragging rights of saying, I got three and you don't. But you'd think that these guys probably wouldn't be friends. Not true. Could, would you believe they actually carpool to work? Go. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, we're off to Fenway. Here we go. That seems right. I got super lost the last time I was driving around here. Crazy sports city. So you can see the Red Bull arch from outside the stadium. Yeah. Because it's like above the walls. Okay. It's pretty sick. Finland. Yeah, Finland was a rough one for both of us, eh? Not good, man. I fell twice in that final. I was curious if you would have caught up or not. I would have caught up. I think you would have. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I fell in the worst spot possible. Great hole shot. Like, I think I tried to hug that corner too tight. All that's going through my head is, how did you blow that? Like, yeah. no one touched you. Yeah. You just fell over. <sighs> I don't know what happens now. Like, for points, we need to beat Kyle here. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if I charge my phone? No, go ahead. Is there a cable or? No, no, right here, wireless, buddy. Wireless? Yeah. Wow. You need one of those in yours. Boom. Oh, it's charging. Perfect. Looking back to Japan. That was an epic race. Super cool track. I can't believe I crashed with Dunn, man. My skates hit his, and yeah. he just like completely took me out. But you had a wicked race. I felt good there. When you get those heats, it's a huge treat. We need to have a wicked result here in Boston. Like, I need it. I'm just trying to get excited for this one, Boston. The ice is going to be mint. It's going to be a crazy atmosphere here. Yeah. <laughs> My hopes are high. Well, we are ready now for the quarterfinals, and Cameron Noz in the middle there got what he wanted because Kyle Croxall, the points leader, knocked out in the round of 32. So a big chance for Cameron Noz and Scott Croxall to make up some points in the championship. First, they've got to get through the quarterfinals. Away they go. This is Noz, Renault, De Pauli, and Johnstone who are battling it out, coming into that Kia banked curve. And it is Cameron Noz who gets out in front with Jim De Pauli in behind. It's going to be a good fight, I think, this for second place. Noz looks relatively comfortable. He does, coming into this second 180-degree turn. He's just got such a nice lead right now, but he cannot forget about these rollers at the bottom. You've got to time these perfect. We've already seen some big mistakes, but the battle for second and third is going on right oh, now. Wow. I think Shane Renault just got it, but they were absolutely together as they came across the line. It's under review for the photo finish. Jim DePauli had it early on, then he kind of got shuffled out Shane Renault looked like he had it and that's the great thing about I'm really loving these final two corners you can go wide you can go tight there's 
half the track has a spine across it that you've got to jump. Then you've got those two rollers you keep talking about, and it just really mixes up the ending every time. Not for this man, Cameron Noz, in the black and orange, but look behind. So ah, it's a stumble from Shane Renault. So Jim DePauli sticks his leg in there. That's a three-way photo finish. Yeah, I can't even tell from here. Let's take another look, but you said it. One rider's on the outside, the other rider's on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Jim DePauli wants a bit of the action. Ah, uh, okay, it's Shane Renault. Shane Renault has just got it, I think. Well, ah. Uh. Yes, so the, the photo finishes from the other side. That's what confused me there. So it is Shane Renault, by the looks of things, who is going to make it through. Yes, it is. Oh. That is confirmed. Oof. He and Cameron Nas are advancing through to the semifinals, and Cameron is talking to Kate. He's still breathing hard, although it looked like you had some clean ice there. It didn't look like it was too tough for you. What's your takeaway at this point? Uh, not a lot. I guess I'm staying consistent. I hope my gait starts to stay strong and uh, got to stay away from the bad ice. There's a couple really bad parts out there right now, so I'm going to try to avoid that and stay consistent. Scott Croxall, Michael Julianello, Dan Witte, and Orovec are now going to take part in this second run. There's Scott Croxall. A little bit of a shoulder dance for the reigning champion as he gets ready to go in the quarterfinals. Away they go, down into the Kia curve turn, and Croxall has the hole shot, has the inside. Julianello's coming back at him, though. Can't quite find room. It's uh, Widdy in third at the moment, and Orovec down in fourth spot. I love this. There's such tight racing already, and Iggy staying very close behind Croxall, but you got to watch out because Dan Whitty's going to try and make some space, look for a line. See, he's already taking yeah. that outside position where we've seen riders come from behind, oh. and it's worked for him. Looked a little bit off balance, though, as he came around there. Very off balance for Orovec, who ends up on his face. And it is Michael Julianello and Scott Croxall that advance through to the semifinals, and an awful lot of friends and family there for Scott Croxall, celebrating down at the finish line. And uh, he is advancing through through to the semi-finals. He and Julianello looked pretty in control of this. They did, and Dan Witte, you know, uh, was maybe trying to make a move here at the end, but it wasn't going to happen. But Scott Croxell, I'll tell you what, he looked really, really good. There's a look at the line. Actually, it's pretty close almost, between the two of them. He almost looked a little too calm there crossing that finish yeah. line. you got to be really careful when you come up to that finish line because you've got guys right on you. You need to skate hard all the way to the end. So Julianello and Croxall advance to the semifinals. And let's hear from Scott, who's talking to Kate. Before that heat race, Scott, you actually looked like you were pretty comfortable. You're doing a little shoulder dance. How comfortable are you, though? Yeah, I'm super comfortable here. I'm just trying to stay relaxed. This is the biggest venue we've ever raced in, so I'm just super fired up trying to do my thing. We know the competition here is steep. Who right now is going to be your biggest competitor? Yeah, I'm going to see Cameron Nas right now in the round of eight, so um, hopefully us two can move on to the final and battle it out. Stay loose out there. Thanks. Good luck. Scott Croxall looking very confident, isn't he? We've still got more racing to come here at Red Bull Crash Dice Boston, but first let's have a look at how these riders approach the rollers on the course. To train the rollers on the track, uh, the pump track here at Woodward and Cloud9 is great. It's all about making sure that you can get your body weightless at the top of the rollers, and then you're utilizing all your strength down the back side of the roller to build speed. Things like learning how to pump the ramps and just be strong on your feet, strong and balanced. And then also some of the longer 30 to 40 second lines, that way you feel the strength. And it's always a progression to boost your game to the next level. I believe air awareness is very critical in being successful in crash dice. When you're going through the different features on the track, having your body in control when you take off in mid-air and landing is super important for generating the most speed out of the features. Oh my goodness, that's a close one! Training on a trampoline for air awareness is really fun. It's really great flipping, spinning around. The trampoline parts do help with regards to feeling controlled in the air. 
for air awareness. Doing practice like here at Woodward, that just plays a factor into the air awareness that you get when you're on a crashed ice track and ends up in better results in the sport. Tina, that just shows just how crucial air awareness is, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, especially on this course. You've got those three big drops, and you don't want to be worrying about anyone else when you're flying through the air. You want to be worrying about yourself, where you're going to land, and how you're going to keep that speed and momentum moving forward. Well, who's going to keep the momentum and get through to the women's final? Well, we're about to find out because it's time for the semis. This semi-final sees Amanda Trunzo, Yonko Yamamoto, Maxi Plant, and Tamara Muirson do battle. Two spots available in the final in Red Bull Crash Dice in Boston. And it is in the black and white in the middle there, Amanda Trunzo, the reigning champion, the American. Away they go, down towards the first corner. It's a strong start from Maxi Plant. She's on the inside in the all black with blue flashes. And that means that Trunzo is dropped down and a little bit of a fall further back. It's Trunzo immediately though, back up the inside into the lead of the semi-final. Plant in second, Muirson third. Junko Yamamoto it was who fell but has managed to get back into it. It's gonna be tight here for second place. Muirson now is up into that second spot. Here they come towards the final couple of corners. Amanda Tranzo looks to have it relatively under control. She's going to be advancing through to the final if she can just get over these last two rollers. And it's going to be tied for second. Wow! Big hit! Plant into Muirson. And uh, <laughs> a smile and a hug. Not sure who got that second final place there. That was some fantastic racing, and Amanda Tranzo did a really nice job of getting back into the lead and in front but she did not have the best start. This is the Kia curve turn. And Trunzo's in second position right here. But as they head underneath the bridge, she found a piece of real estate, but the battle for second oh. and third. I think it's Maxi Plant on the left side of your screen, but and they both go down. Is Maxi Plant in control there? I think that's going to be the question, because there is a rule that, OK, if you got across the line first, but you're just throwing your body over there, the judges can decide, actually, no. And it's happened to her before, where yeah. she's come across the finish line and actually gotten DQ'd because she was out of control. There she looks much more in control than the incident where she was disqualified. Uh, we'll have to see what the judges say. Because she certainly got across the line first, Maxi Plant, looking at that replay, but it's whether she was in control or not that's going to be the question. And you can see the Canadian with her hands on her hips there, waiting for the decision to come through still under review from the video judge but there is Amanda Trunzo who's looking <laughs> so strong yep who's going to be coming with you I think is the question there's no doubt that the number one rider in the world last year is going to be progressing through to the final and uh, as I say we're still under review to see who will be advancing with her into that final four here's a look at it again so Maxi Plant it's close <sighs> I felt, yeah, it's almost like she lost control after the line. She didn't throw herself she, over the line like a like a crazy person. Yeah, she was in control for a good part of the finish after she crossed that line. Yeah. And I think the judges will take into consideration that. Except they don't by the looks of things. So a uh, disqualification and Muirson is through into the finals. That's a really borderline call, perhaps a bit harsh on Maxi Plant but the judges have clearly decided she was out of control and a very, very happy uh, Tamara Muirson makes it through and advances through to the final with Amanda Trunzo. Time for the semi-final with Miriam Trepenye there lining up on the far left-hand side. Anais Moran, Jacqueline Leger and Tamara Kajar about to do battle. Two spots available in the final. And this is going to be a tight one. There's going to be a surprise elimination here, if not two, although Tamara Kajar immediately falling back. Trepanier has the lead. Leger sneaks up the inside of Anais Morand in the white and red. But Morand is back through again. Kajar running wide. Trepanier in the lead at the moment, though. And Leger, as it stands, out. And Leger needs to make something happen. This is going to be a big upset if Leger gets out early enough. Leger finds a piece of real estate, goes on the inside. Right now, she is moving on, but Anis Morand do not count her out as we head into this finish. Oh. Anise Morand in the white and the red is battling.
battling it out with Jacqueline Legere. Legere loses it. Anais Morand is through to the final. And for the first time in Red Bull Crash Dice this season, Jacqueline Legere is not advancing to the final. That is a big, big upset. The points leader in the women's competition who finished second in Japan and fourth in Finland can only get fifth at best now here in Boston. I looked at this matchup and this was a tough, tough battle. So watch this finish, Legere's in the pink. She's basically oh. having problems already in that roller section. Anise Moran takes advantage of it in that white and red and <laughs> moves on. And Jack, we saw at some other races where Moran quit skating right at the line and lost it. And I think she was she learned her lesson because see how she keeps skating? Yeah. She skated much harder right there before the finish line. And it's now her turn to move on to the final. That's a big upset then in the women's competition. Anais Morand making it through to the final. So the women's final is set. The men's semi-finals are coming up when we return to Fenway Park for Red Bull Crash Dice. I'm definitely a fan of the 180 turns. There's been a lot of 180 turns lately, and I think it's because they like to bring the pack closer together in the middle of the race. I love those things. Glad they started to add the hairpin turns in the last two years. The way that I train for that is definitely leg strength. You need to be able to hold on to that compression. Edge work on the ice rink to make sure you can get your edges into the ice really hard, especially when it's really rough out there. Off ice training on the roller blades. It's all about taking a lot of force and speed into the quarter pipes. And then also if you can come to the skate park and get into a bowl, something with a huge wall on it, and you can turn quickly, keep your balance, because when you're taking that turn, it wants to put you backwards. And if you're backwards, you don't have any strength coming down the other side. So if you can get into the turn, keep your balance and momentum, and then pump out of that turn to get moving again right away, that's great practice for those features on the Red Bull Crash Dice track. Michael Ulianello really likes 180 turns, Cena. That's what I'm getting. Well, and he's really good at them. You yeah. can tell. Uh, yeah, these riders train for the 180 turns. You could see them when they go through that inline skate park. And then on this track, there's two major ones. So it's going to be more important than ever to know your technique. Absolutely. And those are going to be the key points of the next races we've got coming up, which is the men's semifinals. Here we go then, the semi-final in the men's competition. Cameron Nas, Michael Udianello on the left-hand side. We've got Scott Croxall and Shane Renault in there as well. This is going to be big. Away they go. Good strong start from all of them and Nas just nips into first place. Julianello Iggy a little bit wobbly in second and that little wobble has put him all the way back down to fourth position with Scott Croxall in the black. The Canadian up into second place. Can Julianello fight back? And this is going to be really scary because Cameron Nas and Scott Croxall they will work together but they're one and two right now and they're probably telling each other all right you know what hold your line hold off Iggy. Iggy's right behind oh. but Iggy might make a move here he's on the Outside line. He's bringing a lot of speed, but I think Croxall just got it. The three of them pile up at the end. Big smiles on their faces. Nos made it through, and I think it's Scott Croxall. We're going under review for photo finish. It looked to me that the Canadian reigning world champion will be advancing through to the final. This might be my favorite finish ever, just because <laughs> yeah. it is so close. And there's so many variables at the end that could go wrong, as we've already seen. Oh! Watch Cameron right there. He's in the orange. He's coming around. Scott Croxell is tucking nice behind him. But see Iggy in the camo? Yeah. Ooh. Oh! Trying to stretch. So there's Noz across the line. And then it's going to be fairly comfortable in the end oh. for Scott Croxall. But it was a really good run from Michael Ulianello, who got his first ever really strong performance last year in St. Paul, but advancing to the finals will be Cameron Nas and Scott Croxall as they look to become the top two in the standings. Next up in the gate, we've got Tristan Dujardil, the French rider on the left, Luca Delago alongside him, and then Tommy Mertz and Matt Johnson all looking to make it through to the final. Two slots available.
Good strong start from Matt Johnson in the black on the outside. Delago doing well too. Oh, a bit of a contact there from Dujadil. And Johnson is in that second advancing position at the moment. Tommy Mertz in the white and orange is trying to come with him as they come down towards the BF Goodridge tyres section. It is Delago who has a strong lead at the moment, but it could all kick off in these final few corners. There's Tommy Mertz trying to push himself through past Johnson and he's up into second place. Dujadil goes up into third position. Two rollers to go. Big wobble from Delago. Dujadil is through. Dujadil advances to the final. Johnson in third. Tommy Mertz has his head in his hands. He can't believe he hasn't advanced. What a good race that was. <laughs> Luca Delago disappeared. Everyone else just kept swapping places. Luca Delago saw what happened to his brother earlier and said, no, I'm getting <laughs> yeah. in front of all that. I'm going <laughs> nowhere near Matt Johnson. I do not want to be by you. So Luca Delago, he's in that yellow. He's way in the lead. So the battle now, oh. Tommy Mertz just goes too big and lands flat, loses all his speed. And see Tristan Dujardil? He's going to seize that opportunity. But what happened to Matt Johnson? For a while, Matt Johnson was in second and then got pushed to the rear. And I'll tell you what, Matt Johnson was racing really good earlier. So there is Luca Delago, who is going through to the next round, which is the final. He and Tristan Dujadil will be advancing to that final. It's going to be a, a thrilling battle to take the victory at Red Bull Crash Dice in Boston. Sal, back to you. Thank you, Jack. What an incredible night of racing on this. The biggest stage that Ice Cross Downhill has ever had in its history here at the inaugural Red Bull Crashed Ice Boston. And the women not disappointing. How about the shocker, Jacqueline Legere? She is out, leaving room as our final is set for Amanda Trunzo. Perhaps with this win to be able to take the lead in this quest to the World Championship, but she's going to have to take out Anais Murano. We called her the dark horse earlier today, Mia Trepanier, and Tamara Moiswissen of the USA. We'll be back to see who will be our women's champion here at Red Bull Crash Dice Boston. Welcome back to Red Bull Signature Series presented by Kia. And we are ready at Fenway Park for the women's final in Red Bull Crash Dice. And what a event this has been. And we are about to have a woman crowned the champion of Fenway Park in Boston. Look at the fireworks going off behind. The crowd making a lot of noise. Nervous moments here, Tina, for the riders or excited moments? It's a combination. There's so much atmosphere. The crowd is electric. You can see Amanda Trunzo right there in the black trying to get the crowd even more fired up. She will be the favorite going into this race. There on the left-hand side is the Swiss rider Anaïs Moron. Then it's Amanda Tronzo, who is the defending champion, pointing to the stars and stripes on her helmet. Then it's Canadian Miriam Trepenye, who is going to be alongside her. And then a first-time finalist, Tamara Mewison. She's not even made it to the semi-finals previously. Now she's here in a Red Bull Crash Dice final. A big exhale from her because she is starting to feel those nerves. So we get ready for the big run down into the Kia curve turn to start the women's final in Boston. Away they go, down towards the first corner. Oh, bit of a stumble there from Trunzo. Trepenier trying to get the lead, but Trunzo gets the whole shot and is in first place. Trepenier in the blue and red slots back into second position with Mewison behind. Anais Morand, a little bit surprisingly, down at the back. But Trunzo with that lead and her power looking so strong and so comfortable, but... Trepenier is right in this, isn't she? she? She's right up behind. It's going to be USA versus Canada for the win. Two rollers to go. Will Amanda Trunzo make it three out of three? Yes, she does. Slides across on one knee. Trepenier with her best result of the season and Tamara Mewison with her best ever result. But Amanda Trunzo wins in Japan, wins in Finland, and now wins in Boston. She's unstoppable. And these are the moments that she has been training for. You know, she is such a fantastic skater and she worked on her technique and it showed and what a fantastic performance, Jack. At the start, she had problems mm. going off of that jump, but she took 
control right away, got that whole shot and kept in that position the entire time. And that has certainly put her in the box seat for the championship as well because Jacqueline Legere didn't make it through to the final. Watch Trunzo here in the black coming down this first drop. She doesn't look totally stable there. But she maintains her balance right as she gets to this Kia curve turn and takes the whole shot. And from there, she maintained her lead. Trepania came up on her at one point, but didn't make a move. Yeah, here towards the end of Kane. Trunzo looking a little wobbly coming off that final drop over the third base spine. And Trepenye looked as though she might be close enough for an attack. But Trunzo so powerful over those final few rollers. Murray, uh, Anise Morand, not really anywhere near the fight. No, and then look at that young rookie, Tamara Mewison, coming in here and getting on the podium. A podium result for the young American. And then the celebration for Amanda Trunzo. Well, let's hear from our race winner. She's with Kate Osborne. The reigning champ is a couple of steps closer to getting another title for this season, Amanda Trunzo. That was an incredible heat, but the start was a little tricky for you. What happened up there? Yeah, you know, there was a big rut right in front of my lane, so I tried. I knew I had to avoid that. I didn't want to fall there, so I was a little bit behind, but squeezed Miriam off on that inside and then kind of just held it the rest of the way. You have focused on not trying to have a wheelhouse in any of these tracks, but to be fair, these technical tracks you've really been working on. How have you seen that pay off? Yeah, you know, it's paid off a lot. Uh, you know, this track was very technical and came out with a win, so that skate park has really paid off. Winning here in the USA, you went to college just up the road at Dartmouth. You have friends and family all around. What do you have to say to those who've come out to celebrate with you tonight? Yeah, thank you so much to uh, the friends and family, the Dartmouth crew, you know. I did it for you guys and brought it home and I can't be more excited. Congratulations, enjoy the celebrations. An incredible and dominant performance from Amanda Trunzo in the women's final. And you know she is keen to pick up these thousand points and that ring don't look too bad either on a historic night here at Red Bull Crash Dice. Well, the men, they follow the women and you know that with this field set, it is opportunity. Kyle Croxel getting knocked out in that round of 32, leaving the door open for Cameron Noss and Scott Croxel, both of whom would so much like to get another world championship, but they're gonna have to get past Luca Delago and Tristan Dugadil from France. Our men's final will be up after the break. Who will be our inaugural Boston Crash Dice champion? We'll find out when we return. Welcome back to Red Bull Crash Dice Boston, presented by Kia, and it's time for the men's final. Cameron Noz and Scott Croxall in the black and orange and the black, respectively, in the middle. They are the two men that could take the lead of the championship. The fireworks go off at Fenway Park. We're about to have fireworks on this downhill ice cross course as well. Those two title protagonists, joined by Luca Delago and Tristan Dujadil on the far left and the far right, respectively. 1,150 feet of racing separates one of these four and Red Bull Crash Dice Boston history. The first Red Bull Crash Dice event to take place in a stadium. And the stadium, Fenway Park, is on its feet. You can just absolutely feel the intensity and all the adrenaline in that moment when you're standing in the gate, Luca, as he's preparing, visualizing his run. He's got his work cut out for him going up against this one. Cameron Nas, he's looking for some redemption from his poor performance less than a week ago in Finland. <laughs> you can hear the crowd. He's got the crowd support behind him. He's a two-time world champion with 14 wins. And alongside him, is going to be the Canadian, Scott Croxall. As the crow flies, it's closer to Canada than to Minnesota. So it's almost a home event for Scott Croxall. He's got fans here, he's got family here. To be honest, his mum is in the room next door to us about to watch this final. So we'll see who's louder, us or her next door. Scott Croxall looking to win another championship, a third title. He's the reigning champion coming into this season. He looks so relaxed. And Tristan Dujadil, he's a man with more than just a downhill ice skate experience. He's got a lot of talent and he's coming from that outside gate position and he can sneak into that hole shot. This is going to be 
tight. So here we go. The countdown finishes, and now thousands of eyes look at the four riders at the top of Fenway Park. Away we go in the men's final. It's a really good start from Cameron Noz. Crocs all slots into second place in the all black. A little bit of a bump in the back, but nothing too untoward there as they come flashing through that second corner. One, two, three, four. And now Delago is trying to get up into the fight as well. But Noz and Croxall, they're good friends as we've seen earlier on, but they both want to take the victory and to take the lead of the championship. Just a couple more corners to go. Little bit wobbly there from Noz. Delago is trying to get up the inside of Croxall. Cameron Noz is going to hold on and win in Boston. Delago is second, and it was really close for third between Dujadil and Scott Croxall. But Cameron Noz is mugged by his friends as he takes victory in crashed ice Boston. Really good ride from him. Luca Delago getting cheered on as well for his second place. Not sure yet who finished third, but that could be key in the championship as well for Cameron Nas. Still more races to come this year. This is a 1,000 point event. There's still 500 and 250 events coming up this season, but Nas surely has put his stamp on this championship. That was absolutely perfect racing from Nas from start to finish. And when he came around that final stretch and into those rollers, he timed everything perfect. But, and it all came from the start, explosive right out of the gate. And he powered off of that jump, already creating a lead, getting to that Kia curve turn first. Ooh, and Scott Crocs, although he is right on his tail. But I'll tell you what. Cameron Nas, you heard that crowd. They were chanting <laughs> USA, and he could feel that energy. That, what a move that was from Luca Delago, sneaking up the inside of Scott Croxall for second, and Croxall just lost his balance. I think he's got third place. I think Dujadil went across the line sort of knees first, but Nas, so confident to swipe the ice with his hand in celebration. I mean, that technique, his technique was so on point every single race. I did not see one mistake from him tonight. Yeah. He was perfect. Yeah, that's definitely Scott Croxall's for third position. Tristan Dujadil threw himself across the line, wiped out uh, Delago as well as they came through there. But it's been such a tight competition, such a close competition, such a enthralling competition. But then in the final, Noz is comf not comfortable, but he had a bit of an advantage over everybody. There's confirmation of Delago in second and Croxall in third. And uh, Wow, but you, you know what I mean, Noz, it was so tight until the final and then under control. I mean, just absolutely, absolutely solid racing. It's, if he had any worry about that loss he had less than a week ago, it didn't show. It didn't show. He came here so hungry, he redeemed himself, and he proved that, you know what, I want that world title and I'm going to show you. So Cameron Noz, after a third world title, and it was an incredibly impressive ride from him. So Cameron Noz, the race winner. Let's go down to Kate Osborne. Thanks, Jack. A perfect evening for Cameron Noz. Literally from start line to the finish line, it was perfect. What was the secret to Fenway Park? Just uh, skate hard, quick starts, and watch the ice. Uh, it's really cold out here tonight, so that ice got a little bit rough and beat up. So I just tried to stay on my feet and stay consistent competition you were up against was so tough how did you stay so cool calm and collected you could have folded honestly I just said this is already better than last weekend so just have fun and enjoy the atmosphere I mean even that semi-final with the boys was as good as a final so wild night of racing you said you want to have fun how much fun was it tonight it was amazing it was really fun out here uh, they put on the event so well everything program was run perfectly so Thank you to everybody that put it on. It was amazing. At the start gate, we heard USA, USA. They were cheering you on. How did, much did that get you going? Uh, it got me going a lot up there hearing that USA chant. But uh, honestly, leaving St. Paul, I thought we were going to lose a bit with the crowd. But we didn't lose a thing. They did it justice here at Fenway. Congratulations. Definitely looking to get that world title, right, Jack? <laughs> Absolutely right. And with that victory, Cameron Noz moves to the top of the Men's World Championship standing. Scott Croxall comes with him up into second place. Kyle Croxall, after his early elimination, moves from the top of the standings all the way down to third. Then Luca Delago in fourth. Mirko Lati, another big loser tonight. He slips down into fifth 
position. But what an evening of racing, Tina. Don't really know where to start. I mean, we'll start with Cameron Noz because he was superb. Well, let's go back to that final when the uh, the crowd was chanting, USA, <laughs> yeah. USA. And to have that type of pressure put on your shoulders, Cameron took that and instead of faltering under pressure where maybe some people could or would, he fed off of that and he performed. I mean, that last race was near perfect and Cameron needed this race. He had a horrible performance in Finland less than a week ago. He put that out of his mind and came in and showed us why he is a two-time world champion. It was a uh, wild racing, Noz called it. It's known as a wild ballpark here at Fenway Park. The, the, the course was incredible and some of the action was just un uh, unbelievable. Oh yeah, well we had heartbreaking moments like Max Dunn going out early oh. after leading the entire time. We saw some guys go into the boards and some guys crashing right there at the finish line. This was probably one of my funnest or one of my most fun races to watch because that finish line, there were so many close moments and that is racing. Yeah, you never knew what was going to happen right until the end. As far as the women's competition is concerned, Amanda Trunzo winning no huge surprise because she's now won the three 1,000-point uh, events back-to-back -back this season. But Jacqueline Leger was a big surprise, not making it through to the final. Well, and Jacqueline didn't look good on this course all week. And just something seemed off for her. But Amanda Trunzo came in and she capitalized on that. She seized the opportunity to take the top of this race. And, uh, and then there's that underdog story of that young Tamara uh, Mewison who came in and finished on the podium. Yeah, absolutely superb racing throughout the men's championship, throughout the women's championship. We're going to go for a rest now, Sal. Back to you. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, Tina. Incredible calls all night with such great racing. And for these fans here in Boston that came out to witness history, they got a treat under the lights as the men and the women truly put on an incredible show here in Fenway Park. And for me to watch here from center field, a night that I soon shall not forget. Team USA's Amanda Trunzo has won all three stops of the 2019 Ice Cross Downhill season. Japan, Finland, and now here on home ice at Fenway Park in Boston. And for that, she gets one of our Red Bull signature moments. And it is a sweep atop the podium for Team USA. Cameron Noss flawless here at iconic Fenway Park in Boston. And for that, he too gets a Red Bull signature moment. The Red Bull Signature Series travels from the frigid sports town of Boston, Massachusetts to the beautiful North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii as the best tube riders in the world take on the Bonsai Pipeline. Be sure to join us for 10 years at the Proving Grounds with the 2019 Volcom Pipe Pro. It has truly been an honor to, to be here to make history here at Red Bull Crashed Ice Boston. Thank you guys for watching on behalf of our entire crew here at the Red Bull Signature Series, Jack Nichols, Tina Dixon, and Kate Osborne. My name is Sal Masakella, and we will see you next time in Hawaii. For the first time, Boston, the city of champions, welcomes Red Bull Crash Dice to Fenway Park. Through